And it is crazy. Oh shit moment. This one's kind of crazy. Hello guys and happy Vlogtober day 14. We are officially two weeks into this. I am still feeling good. I keep saying this and you guys literally keep DMing me all the time like how you doing? Because y'all know around this time like day 12 or so of Vlogmas is when I like have a mental breakdown. <laughs> Has that happened yet? We are still feeling good, going strong, but I did want to throw in a more chill video in the middle here because I have been like doing a whole bunch of shit lately. So I thought we would do a nice chill q and I haven't done an actual like Q&A on my channel in a very long time. So I of course opened it up on my Instagram, which if you're not following me there, you definitely should because I always do all my Q&As on there when I do like my pub dates and you guys wanna ask questions about Freya and stuff like that, which is basically what this Q&A is gonna be centered around. I said that I would answer some of the questions on my stories, which I did, and then I would answer some in my video and as I was looking through them there was definitely like half and half of more personal questions that you guys wanted to ask and then questions about dogs or Freya specifically training that kind of stuff so I decided to split it that way and I answered all of the like personal questions on my stories and then I saved all of the dog related ones for this Q&A because I know that on my channel y'all love hearing about Freya or just how we do things and my tips and stuff like that so I'm hoping this can be helpful I haven't read through all of the questions and hopefully I get to all of them or as many as I possibly can there's quite a few in here first question is have I ever considered getting a second dog or is one enough? And I have addressed this in previous videos and stuff like that, that yes, we do plan on getting a second dog. Freya is our blue Merle. I would love to get a red Merle with her. That's kind of the plan. And I would say that before we got Freya, I was like this close to getting two at the same time. So that way they could like entertain each other, grow up together, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm so glad I did not because as you guys know, if you've been following all of this, the puppy blues, puppy stage, this regression stage that Freya is currently in is hell. And I could not imagine going through it with two dogs at the same time. And so literally after like day three of getting Freya, I decided that we would wait until Freya's like a year and a half before getting another dog. But I actually literally just messaged our breeder that we got Freya from like 20 minutes ago, asking if she had plans to have litters next year. Because the wait list can sometimes get really crazy. So if I have to get on a wait list now to get a dog by, you know, next November, I will do that because getting dogs and all of that is hectic. This next one asks, what's up with the puppy blues? And I don't know if you mean this as in, do I have an update on our puppy? puppy blues and really there is no update it definitely hasn't been as bad as it was at the event which is what prompted me to talk about puppy blues and everything and her nine month pup date but she hasn't been to an event she has been okay at home and I've been doing a lot more structured training sessions and structured walks that we're actually training on our walks more than just walking and it definitely has been helping and Griffin and I are actually looking into training classes or you know boarding training we're, we're going through all of the options we have not decided on anything right now but we do think that doing four and professional training right now while she's in this regression phase might be really helpful. But if you're asking like, what is up with the puppy blues? Like what is the puppy blues? Puppy blues is basically just putting the feeling of, did you make a mistake? I regret getting this dog. What the hell did I get myself into? And putting that into words. And a lot of pet parents go through this. I'm not gonna say every single one, but I'd be shocked if it wasn't every single one because I went through this. Everybody since that nine month pup date, if you go back and read those comments is crazy. Everybody's going through it. You are not alone in it because puppies are cute you think it's gonna be cute and then day three rolls around of having your eight-week-old puppy and you want to rip your hair out and you're crying every day and it's normal I like this question because she's been going through this phase what do I do for myself like self-care wise on Freya's bad days simple and kind of funny answer is I take her to docky daycare <laughs> she is just in a mood in the morning and I don't have the mental capacity to deal with it in a level-headed, calm way that I should be, I take her to doggy daycare. That is few and far between because obviously that's not fixing an issue. Like that is just prolonging it and making it worse. So I don't do that on a regular basis, but that is like kind of the funny answer. It's just, you know, I can't deal with her right now. And a lot of the times if that's happening with me, I pass her on to Griffin and Griffin will take her for some time so that way I can calm down. But on the days that I don't send her to daycare, honestly, I try to focus on the things that she is like good at or I do things that I know know make me happy or make me like love her again <laughs> yeah when she is crazy I want to rip my hair out but then she'll cuddle up with me on the couch and I'm like I love you I want another puppy it, it just obviously it fluctuates so if she is really crazy realistically I'll do some training with her or I'll give her a peanut butter Kong that's frozen to last her for like 45 minutes to like leave me alone for a little bit I'll give her a food puzzle I will do something that's like mentally stimulating to like keep her busy because I just need me time and kind of like the bad answer to this is sometimes you really can't do 
anything, especially if it's in the moment. Cause again, before she was vaccinated, I couldn't take her to doggy daycare and I was stuck with her all day. So sometimes I went out on the porch with her. She loved to sit out on the porch. And so if she was like being absolutely crazy, I would like, yep, let's go sit outside. And she would just sit out there and stare at everybody and like, leave me alone. I would just open the door so I could sit on the couch for 20 minutes while she looks outside at the people walking by and everything. But just know it gets better. It gets better. This one's kind of crazy to put into perspective, but it asks, how long did it take you to realize your life is centered around Freya? That's crazy to think about. Of course, if you don't have dogs or you don't have puppies, you're gonna be like, what do you mean? Especially if you don't have babies, all of that's kind of like new to you. But essentially when you get a dog or when you have a child, you are tied to this thing. Like they depend on you for life, to get food, to get water, like to go potty, to meet all of their needs, to feel fulfillment. Like that all comes from you. You are responsible for a child and a dog or cat, all of those things. I think it took about a week for it to really set in. Like obviously I knew what I was getting myself into as far as like having an animal, but it took about a week for me to have that like, oh shit moment. I don't have days to myself anymore. I can't just sleep in until one o'clock PM anymore. I can't stay up all night because I need my sleep. I can't just be gone all day for eight hours. I can't just sporadically plan vacations or just go spend the night at a friend's house or anything like that. You now are responsible for a living, breathing thing that needs you and depends on you to survive. So it is kind of like jarring if you've never had to like come to that realization, but it didn't take very long for me to just be like, wow. And that's kind of when the puppy blues sets in. It, it kind of goes hand in hand when you're like, I will never have my life back to the way it was before. And my life is no longer mine. And that's what kind of causes the puppy blues because you realize like, what the fuck did I do? Like my life is forever altered and I can't live selfishly anymore. Now for me, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. Like, I don't know if it's the motherly instincts or whatever it is, but like as soon as Freya needs anything, like I'm right there. I think about that a hundred percent, like how long I'm gone, when she needs to go potty, has she eaten, does she need this? I make sure she gets her exercise every day, blah, 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 blah. But I know that Griffin struggled with that in the beginning because like all of us, like he doesn't have kids or animals or anything like that. So he lived his life very selfishly. And if he's tired, he's gonna sleep in. If he wants to stay up, he'll stay up. If he wants to go to bed, he goes to bed. Whenever he wants to eat, he eats. So it took a lot of like realizations and just like understanding that Freya depends on him for him to be like, oh shit. And it also I think took him longer because he wasn't as responsible for her as I was. Like Griffin worked a full nine to five job every day and was gone every day. I worked from home and I was the person training her, taking care of her, feeding her all of her meals, like putting her down for naps, whatever. So Freya depended on me, not really Griffin. So it did take him longer to like realize that his life isn't his life anymore. And it revolves around Freya basically. But for me, it took like a week at most to realize that like, I will never have a day to myself anymore. <laughs> How did I tire Freya out before she had her shots? Now this is interesting because obviously before they have their shots, dogs can't like go outside or play with other dogs or go to dog parks, go to doggy daycare, like go on walks. Like you literally are just stuck inside basically. And it is crazy because you can only do so much in an apartment, especially like a one bedroom apartment. But we knew that going into it. But one thing that helped me and I think Freya is that we stuck to a really strict like schedule. Her schedule changed as she got older and like the hours either decreased or increased of like nap times to play times kind thing but right when we got her she was basically down for a two hour nap and then would be up for an hour and then down for a two hour nap and be up for an hour so we just rotated through that all day but in that hour I would basically spend the first half hour training her and then the second half hour playing with her so every hour that she was awake she was constantly doing something and I was constantly doing something with her so it was really easy to get her tired because the first 30 minutes we would train I would teach her her sits teach her her lay downs and then the second half we would literally just like kind of run around the apartment or I would have a toy in my lap and we'd kind of play with it or I let her kind of work through a little ball that lets her like chew out treats or you know a treat dispensing ball. I would take her out to the porch to kind of like look at cars and stuff like that because anything that's stimulating for a puppy will tire them out. Like they don't have to be running but for an Aussie which is like a high energy breed I, I tried to hit it all. We tried to mentally stimulate and physically stimulate for an entire hour and she would knock out for two hour naps every time. We would also spend one of those hours midday on like a socialization activity where I would like introduce her to new things, which is also very stimulating and exhausting for puppies. So sometimes I would take her to the truck stores that I work at so she could like meet my coworkers and stuff like that. I wouldn't let her run around because she wasn't vaccinated. So I would hold her and people could pet her. She's meeting new people, seeing things, smells, sounds, or whatever. And she would pass out on the car ride home. So little things like that can also exhaust your dogs before they are vaccinated. I actually have a video coming out on the 18th about how 
to socialize your dog before they're vaccinated. Literally comes with a free checklist for you guys. Like I love the video and I hope it's really helpful for you guys. So if you're not yet subscribed, do so so you don't miss it on that video. That'll come out on the 18th because we would basically do a thing on this checklist that you guys will see every day. Can I please make a video of what I brought to go get Freya and things that helped out with that? I guess I could make a whole video on that, but I'll also just throw that in this Q&A because it wasn't much, at least for us. We just brought a dog bed for her, one soft toy and I think one hard toy. And then we brought some treats, a travel water bottle for her because we would be in the car for about three hours, a leash. Freya came with a collar already, so we didn't bring a collar. We knew that she was gonna come with one, but of course like bring a collar. <laughs> and then in the back seat, we already had like my car hammock set up. So that way, you know, she could walk around in the back seat and all of that was like waterproof and stuff like that. But if you don't have like a car hammock, I would bring like pee pads or anything like that. Especially if you're in like a long car drive. We were only three hours and she slept the entire way. Most puppies do. So we didn't really bring much. How did we know that Freya was ready to sleep through the night without an accident? It definitely took some time. We incrementally increased the amount of hours that she went in between potty breaks in like two week increments. And then we would like up at an hour. So for example, for the first two weeks of having her, we took her out every hour. On the hour, that's during the day and at night. So that way we could potty train her a lot quicker and it worked. And then the next two weeks, we upped it to two hours and that's during the day and also at night. And then the next two weeks, we did every three hours and the next two weeks, we did every four hours. So basically we found out that she could stay all night without an accident, probably after like 12 weeks or so. Freya's actually never knock on wood, had an accident in her crate, even as like a puppy. What are my favorite breeds except for Aussies? I love this question. So I, I love basically like any dog for different reasons, but my number one is a pit bull. The only reason why I don't have one is because apartment complexes ban pit bulls all the time because they're aggressive breeds. Don't even get me started. I also really, really love corgis. They crack me up because they're herding dogs, but they're so small. Freya used to play with corgis all the time when she was little because they run so fast and she runs so fast like they could really play well while she was like on the small side of the dog park kind of thing. I could probably say something nice about like every breed. I love Great Danes because they're just like big. I love Dalmatians because they're spotted and so unique. Huskies crack me up with how like vocal they are, but I would never own one because it would drive me insane. Like I, I just love all dogs. The last question I'm gonna answer is one that I unfortunately can't answer, but I'm throwing it in here just in case any of you guys can answer it. Do so in the comments. Any suggestions on training two puppies at once? I got one in July and another in October. And let me just say I am praying for you. I am rooting for you. More power to you. A lot of people do that. There's another girl that I follow on Instagram. I think she waited like half a year, maybe eight months before getting her second Aussie. It's not impossible. The best advice that I've seen is to work with your dogs separately and together. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're getting enough sleep, but if any of you guys are watching have two dogs or have recommendations, or if you guys have seen other videos, comment them down below for this person so we can like help each other out in the comments. But I'm going to end it here for today's Q&A. If you guys want to be a part of the next one, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I do Q&As on my stories very frequently, but you know, the video side of things come very rarely. So if you're not following me on Instagram, you're missing out on a lot more that happens over there that doesn't happen on my channel. But I love you guys so much, more than you'll ever know, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!